Um, well, the idea, David, for this glass artwork was first proposed in 2012 as a centenary gift from the ACT War Widows Guild. Canberra Services Club indicated uh, that they'd be honoured to accept the gift. The idea was taken to Associate Professor Richard Whiteley, who's the head of Glassworks at ANU, and he chose award-winning glass artist Ruth Oliphant uh, to fulfil the commission. Uh, well, the inspiration for the artwork was taken from the Guild's badge, a kookaburra, the words of our motto, and the ACT centenary floral emblem, Canberra Bells. Melding these elements, Ruth has given us the image of a woman, strong yet feminine, who is enfolded in the wings of a kookaburra, representing the Guild members' support for each other. Above her head are the words of our motto, which were taken from King George VI wartime Christmas broadcast for 1941. We all belong to each other. We all need each other. It is in serving each other and in sacrificing for our common good that we are finding our true life. This gift is a tangible acknowledgement of the part played by war widows in the soul rearing of their children or in the prolonged care of men whose suffering manifested itself physically, emotionally and mentally. This artwork is also a symbolic reminder that political decisions have widely, deeply felt inexorable consequences. So the logo of the War Widows is a kookaburra and the kookaburra was chosen because it's um, a bird that's fiercely protective of its family and it also always has this laugh so it's about making the best out of adversity. So I really loved that symbol of the kookaburra. So the window has um, a woman who represents the War Widows and she's being held in the embrace of the kookaburra wings and that's to represent She's kind of being held in support by the um, by the guild, the War Widows Guild. So she is, yeah, they're all there kind of looking after each other. I guess some of the challenges are, um, you know, you sit, you sit with the knowledge that this is a really important window for people. It's um, something that has come from a lot of discussion and has come from a place of real importance. So you, you have a, quite a big weight of responsibility to to create something that people will not only feel proud of but feel a personal ownership of and so I guess that's what I feel most proud of and it was also the most difficult and you know you have to go through a process um, of design and you have to be able to hold everyone's wishes but also you have to be able to give them something that um, that an artist can give so you're bringing your own thing. So there's actually three layers of glass um, in this piece and the coloured glass are on different levels so that just allows it to be um, just have a slight movement in the wings and then there's a clear glass capping the top so that's heated in the kiln and I take it up to about 800 degrees and that firing process is a bit over 24 hours. He was in Z company independent he was a major uh, and they were seen to be in all pretty rough country anyway and got sick but they were pleased when the mail got through and they got their tobacco and also <laughs> made things but I think it was all pretty tough. Uh, when I met him he had good days and bad days I think they all did because they didn't have have a doctor on the spot and, and that's an awful climate. I've got a nice lot of friends and um, they say, why do you stay here? I said, well, why go to a room? You know, just as a home, I know they do a good job, but um, so long as I can get up and down the steps,
but now you can get help here. We're lucky. And through the war widows, we all do things together, and a lot of them have been through a lot of hard times. So we just hope for the best. Okay, towards the latter part of World War II, uh, Major General George Vasey encouraged his wife, uh, Jessie Mary Vasey, uh, to help, help and support the widows of men who died while serving their country. Unfortunately, uh, Major General Vasey was himself killed in a plane accident just six months before the end of the war. Uh, so while many were out celebrating the end of the war, uh, thousands of widows uh, faced an uncertain future without their husbands, and especially those with small children who now lived almost on the poverty line. So Mrs. Facey, now a widow herself, uh, she tried, started to unite the widows so that as one voice they could, um, they could express their needs. So in 1946, she formed the War Widows Guild. You had to be quite self-sufficient in many ways. I had two children at that time. When Kevin actually went, I um, put his pillow away and washed any clothes that he had and put them away and sort of lived a life the other side of being a wife. And you got used to it. You had to. I didn't have a car. We were living in Maroubra for four years at that stage. And uh, we used to walk up to the shops and I had a big wicker basket, which I took the youngest. He was, oh, I don't know, under two at that stage, up in the basket then chucked him out and put the <laughs> the shopping in and walked him home again. Sometimes we had a move and really, so long as we had our own pillows and our own coffee mugs, that was all we had. We didn't collect books, we didn't collect records. Um, I wasn't allowed any flower roses um, because it was just one more thing to move all the time. Eventually, in 1970, he was invalided out of the Navy. We had three children by then. $54.60 a fortnight to keep three people on, even in those days was not much as an invalid pension. I went back to nursing. I did four and a half years of night duty to start with, so Kevin was responsible for the children. That wasn't easy one way or the other. The youngest was 18 months and she couldn't quite see why she had to be quiet because mummy was asleep nobody else's mother slept during the day um, his pain got worse and worse tremendous self-control but in September 1992 I came home from nursing and I found he had shot himself in the garage and was dead. So I was very lucky in that I worked in the emergency department and I knew the ambulance men and I knew the police and they all were absolutely tremendous. He was only home a couple of days and uh, he became very sick with a very high fever and uh, he was hospitalised. Um, they thought it was malaria but it wasn't. Uh, they never worked out what it was but um, his medical um, record put it down as glandular fever but we were later told that that just wasn't uh, possible. Uh, the fevers recurred over many years and um, you know when he was diagnosed with um, 
multiple myeloma, we realised that actually what he had was toxic poisoning from Agent Orange. We didn't know anything about PTSD in those days and uh, it's only in hindsight, you know, that I realise that there was a problem. When I got the letter from DVA confirming that I was eligible for a war widow's pension, it included an application to uh, join the War Widows Guild. I have to say I really didn't know anything about it before then. But unfortunately that doesn't happen these days. So um, the War Widows Guild, you know, is struggling, attracting um, new members, even though there are still a lot of uh, War Widows being created. Still, like I said, it's been 10 years, coming up 10 years, and um, I never thought I'd ever get past that first two, three years. It was just, I was lost, I wasn't myself. Um, it was, especially having a young son as well, um, if I had the choice back then, I would have rather just go and hide in a hole and not deal with issues or anything, um, but I couldn't, you know, I had a 12-year-old son um, I had no family, so I had to sort of pull it together and bury every, everything then for the first couple of years and, um, you know, you just had to keep on going, chugging along and carrying that hurt and still, you know, trying to, you know, make sure you're doing the right thing with your child and, and um, making sure that he had a good life. A couple of years ago, or it would be four years ago, my girlfriend lost her husband, um, which also he was a pole bearer for Matt's funeral. And um, I always said to her, you know, you can't give somebody tips or pointers or anything because we're all different and we all carry it in different ways. But I did say to her that pain, it gets soft, softer as time goes on, but you've just got to learn to live with it because um, it never goes. I, I know I'm going to be an, an old woman and um, you know I'm still going to get upset and cry and and you know think about those times and that but um, that's my you know I always said to her it's never going to go that pain will never leave you just manage and you deal with it.